Welcome to another Digital Anarchy tutorial. I'm Jim Tierney, president of Digital Anarchy. And in this tutorial, we're going to go over some difficult green screen extractions and use that to create this uh, lovely work of art uh, illustrating the attack of the birds. So let's uh, dive into it. Let's take a look at what our initial green screen shot looks like. And luckily, I happen to be a very cheap green screen model. So I sort of borrowed myself for this shot. And you can see that uh, I've got a little bit of hair action going on uh, with the hair going up above my head as if it's being grabbed. And I'm, of course, freaking out about that. So let's take a look at how this particular extraction works. Now, there's some serious problems with this shot. Uh, one, my hair is... Well, if you've never seen that much flyaway hair, you probably will never see that much flyaway hair. But in this case, there's a lot of it. And that hair is blending with the green screen and is going to present a spill problem. Also, there is a problem with the spill on my shirt on the front. And I know this because I have already tried to pull a key on this image. And that area was problematic as was the hair. So in this case, I'm going to do a divide and conquer approach. I'm going to use some of Photoshop's tools to help me out with the extraction. And so I'm going to grab the quick selection tool, which is similar to the magic wand tool, but works much better. So we're going to select that. And I'm going to come down here to my layer and start clicking on the shirt. And as I drag around the shirt, it's going to select the, that area. And once I have that, I'm going to grab my lasso tool and just kind of expand that selection to include all of the shirt and all of this area over here. All right. So now I have a region that has the shirt isolated, but none of the hair. And so I'm going to run prime at once on this part and then run and then invert the selection and run prime at again. And the advantage of this is that the two problem areas are separated. I'm not trying to solve two problems at the same time, which is very difficult with chroma key or prime at or anything. Um, it's much easier if you can just isolate the problems, deal with them one at a time. And so that's what I've done here. So let's apply Prime App. Go down to the Digital Anarchy submenu and apply Prime App. So you can see that it hasn't done a terrific job automatically. Uh, the auto mask is really designed for sort of head and shoulder shots, uh, three quarter length shots, and you know we don't even have a head in this shot. It's just this weird selected area. And so we're going to have to create the key manually. So the first step is to grab my step one tool here and select the background. That improves things already. And we can take a look at our mask and go to our clean black background tool and click and drag in the background area. And then do the same thing for the foreground area. Select that and just start clicking and dragging on that area. And that all looks good. And so we're going to go back to our comp, and you can see that everything looks pretty great, except for the fact that I've got some green on the shirt. And so there's many ways of dealing with this. Uh, you can use Spill Minus or Spill Sponge. It's always good to give those a try first. And Spill Minus has done a great job of removing that out of there. And so we can take a look at our mask. Mask still looks good. Go to our comp, the green is pretty much gone. And we can click OK and go back out to Photoshop. And so that's done a pretty nice job. We've got transparency where we want it. The shirt looks good. And now we can invert that selection and do the other half of our divide and conquer approach. So we've inverted the selection. And now we're going to go to filter, hierarchy, primat, and try it all over again. So again, this is also going to require us to do a manual mask. Anytime you have this much hair flying around, 
the auto mask probably is not going to do the best job. And so again, we click on the background. That sets the background color. We now take a look at our mask and use our clean background tool to deal with any problem areas. Get the background 100% black. The foreground already looks like it's 100% white, so we don't really need to worry about the clean foreground tool. But you'll see that once we go back to our comp, there's quite a lot of green spill in the hair. And so again, we're going to try and use our spill minus tool to eradicate that. And in version 5.0, the spill minus tool is fairly sensitive, so you don't want to do big sweeping strokes. You just want to do a pixel here and a pixel there. And you can see that that overdid it. And by and large, that looks pretty good. Now, it's a little bit tricky to say whether the hair back here is just naturally lighter or if there's actually some green in there. Uh, we can also use the fine tuning controls to help us out with this. So we can click on an area and we can also do the remove spill here. This can be a finer way of doing it and so I think that's a little bit better and then so I'm gonna click on OK and that's gonna take us back out to Photoshop. Now there is one thing you can do here if you really don't like the hair color if you really think it's problematic, we can use the color paintbrush effect. And there's a whole tutorial on this, so I'm not going to go too in-depth to it. But basically, you sample the hair color. You set your mode to color. We lock the transparency of our layer. And then we basically paint away any color artifacts. So now I can just paint on top of this, and because we're set in color mode, it's going to just apply the color to the areas that we're painting on. And so it's kind of a quick and dirty way of dealing with any color contamination that Primat doesn't pick up. And so there's a whole tutorial on, on this. Um, I'm not going to go into beyond what I've just showed you. But it's very powerful for dealing with very subtle color spill problems. All right, so now that I've got myself keyed out here, looking very terrified that there's something above me, I'm going to expand my canvas a little bit, or a lot in this case. And we'll zoom out a bit. All right. So now I've got plenty of room up here for my birds. So the first one I'm going to do is a hawk. So these are great images from greenscreenanimals.com. It's a very cool website that has green screen footage, both stills and video, of exotic animals. It's very cool. They have loaned us, they have loaned us several birds for this tutorial. And one of them is a hawk. And you can see that overall this is a beautifully shot green screen, the background is great, but we have this perch that the hawk is on. And so we're going to have some trouble with that, so we'll talk about how to deal with that. We're going to go into Primat. Now the key thing to remember when using Primat is that you have all of Photoshop's tools as well. You don't have to do everything in Primat. And in fact, in a lot of cases it's better if you don't. So we're going to get rid of most of the perch within Primap, but there's probably still going to be a little bit there left, and we'll use Photoshop's tools to deal with that remnant. So I'm going to go back to my manual process. We can try AutoMask and see how it works out. And you can see AutoMask actually did a really nice job. Uh, let's take a look at our mask. And we can see that it looks quite good. Uh, we do still have the problem of the perch, so we're going to clean background and dial that in and see what that gives us. 
So I've got rid of most of the perch along with some of the claws in the beak. And so I'm going to go to the clean foreground, add those back in. And sometimes when you're doing this, changing to the box tool is a little bit better. You can see that we have some noise down here. And I'm going to try and use the box to get all that stuff. And so now the bird looks good, but we've introduced some more of the perch. So it's this back and forth and trying to get all of it done in Primat is going to be a little bit of a pain. And so it's easier just to take what we get from Primat. And I'm going to add a little bit of feathering to this bird. That looks good. And I'm going to take this back out to Photoshop. Click OK. Now, I did one rookie mistake that many, many people do. And that is I did not make the layer here a regular layer. If you open up a TIFF file or a JPEG, Photoshop is always going to bring it in as a background layer. And that means the layer can't have transparency. And so that's not good because the whole point of Primat is to get rid of the background and have the subject on transparency. So if you do this, you just hit undo, go over here, double click on the layer and click OK. That will make it a regular layer and then just rerun Primat. And just like that, we have our bird on a transparent layer. And we also have our perch down here, which is not what we want. So we're going to grab the eraser tool and just get rid of it. You could use the selection tool to just drag around it. Um, in this case, since there's really not that much to it, I'm just going to use my handy eraser and get rid of all this junk. And so that looks great. And now we're going to take this and move it over to our other image. And actually give me something to be freaking out about. And I'll paste this in here. It's quite a lot larger than we need it. So we're going to scale it down a bit. Or a lot. And we're going to put him up here. Make it look like it's grabbing my hair. And we're going to click OK to accept the scaling. And we are good to go. So that's bird number one. We also have a very angry owl. And I'm not going to go through the green screen process for each and every one of them. I think between myself and the hawk, you've gotten a pretty good idea of how to deal with some tricky green screen difficulties. And we'll select all, copy that. We'll paste that into this comp. And you'll notice that there's a line left over from the green screen, so we'll delete that. And I'm going to move him behind me. Because, you know, it sort of looks like he's doing like this dive bomb thing. Coming in at this crazy angle. You know, his legs are kind of down because, of course, he was on a perch as well. And so what I think I'm going to do is grab my selection tool here. And we're going to sort of crop his feet in here. And that gives him more of kind of a more aerodynamic look, making him look like he's sort of dive bombing in from the background. And we'll add a motion blur to him in a little bit. And I also have an eagle that's looking not so happy. So we're going to copy and paste him in. Put him in the foreground. Again, scale him down a bit. But in this case, we're going to rotate him around as if he's like flying in and is going to attack my arm to prevent me from whacking away the other birds. And so now I have a whole host of birds that are attacking me. Now the other fun thing we can do is apply Tune It to this, create sort of a graphic novel look out of it. We'll start off with the eagle. 
And we're just going to go to digital error key, tune it. The default settings on this one are probably fine. We'll click OK. And that looks good. And since he's sort of flying in, why don't we add a little bit of motion blur to him? That looks good. It gives him some motion, like he's really flying in there and trying to take a piece of me. The other birds can get similar treatments. We'll apply tune it to the hawk. And with the hawk, we're going to give him a little bit thicker outlines. Now, one thing about tune it, which I'll mention, is it really helps if you zoom all the way in because tune it is resolution dependent. And so what it's going to look like at 100% is different than what it will look like at 25% or something like that. So this is exactly how my hawk will look. So I'll click OK. And so now he looks pretty lovely. And lastly, well not lastly, but we'll do the uh, owl. And since he's smaller and kind of in the background, actually I'm going to make those lines a little bit thinner. Maybe reduce the sensitivity a bit. And then click OK. And since he is in the background, we're going to add a bit of a blur to him as well. I think we'll do the radial zoom blur here. Give him some dive bombing look and we'll also blur just do a little bit of a Gaussian blur on him to make him look like he's in the background. And he's diving on in. And lastly, we will tune me. And again, you're not really going to see what this looks like unless you zoom all the way in. And isn't that lovely? But we will uh, reduce the sensitivity a bit. Leave the thickness at 1. And click OK. And we'll go ahead and add in a white background. And you can see I have a great panel for my next graphic novel, The Angry Birds. Unfortunately, there's no pigs, but GreenScreensAnimals.com did give us a porcupine. And I haven't quite decided on how to use the porcupine. So we're just going to leave it at that, that there's a porcupine in the scene. And the next panel will probably have my porcupine with a superhero thing on it and flying in to save the day. That's my theory at this point. But uh, hopefully you've gotten something out of this and have enjoyed it. We have plenty of other tutorials, both on Primat and Tunit and all of our other products at digitalanarchy.com. And you can also download free trials and there's a whole bunch of other resources and other good stuff. But thank you for joining me and see you in the next tutorial.